Hey, Braz Fax here. I've been recently trying out some chest rigs, actually a lot of chest rigs, and today I want to bring you one of them. But in order to really talk and review about chest rigs, I think it's worth defining and discussing what makes them different, better, worse, compared to the micro rig, as these dominate the industry focus and consumer focus at this time, and seem to be the clear-cut choice on paper at least. So today you're getting a double whammy, both a review and a discussion of micro rigs versus chest rigs. We're going to be featuring the, the Recce Rig from Onward Research. Hey, Recce is back. Whew. On the surface, it really seems like micro rigs are the evolution of the chest rig, solving many of the issues of having a singular design. You can both use it as a light configuration, maintaining much of the original ethos of a compact maneuverable package that carries the essential mags and accessories. You can also dial it to 11, buy a Thing 1, a Thing 2 from Spiritus, or any other expander wings, put big ol' fucking GP pouches up front, left, right, Nalgene, TQ wings, extra magazine wings, radio pouches, a dangler the size of a watermelon, and of course patches all over. Congratulations, you've gone full Costco mode, and expanded both your capabilities, but also your self-loathing when you realize you spent $400 on odds and ends like snacks, party dip, ribeyes, I mean, I mean nylon gear. <laughs> what the fuck? Obviously, most civilians do not need all this gear, not even close, but it illustrates that you can bring all that you need, and then some, and then some, and then a little bit more, really illustrating the flexibility and capability of a micro-rig setup. This is not a case of one is better than the other, as an absolute, but a case of competing upsides and downsides that will appeal to different missions and people. So I'm going to focus on those upsides and downsides, and then you can decide which one really fits you. It's also really important to note, I'm speaking in generalities here, there are chest rigs that are very similar to a micro rig, and vice versa. So there will be overlap. The pure micro rig is great. Simple, compact, it allows a large range of movement without impeding your arms, movement of rifle, and more. It's the ultimate run and gun setup, if you will. And while a lot of people are getting kind of tired of micro rigs and looking to try something else, it's worth noting the micro rig is pretty damn good. And if you don't need too much mission specific kit, to me, it feels like the best option still. But as soon as you begin to demand the micro rig to facilitate prone, partial prone, you already see issues begin to arise. By moving the GP pouches as a default configuration to on top of the magazine, even if they're mini GP pouches, you get something that is very, very thick. You add the near requirement of running full-size danglers on most micro rigs to even carry a modest load of first aid, and you quickly run into issues where previously difficult prone positions become nearly impossible, especially when attempting to shoot upwards or on inclines in the prone. And that's really just talking about mostly trim micro rigs that have the default two GP pouches or one GP pouch up front, magazines, and a dangler. Most configurations or mission sets require far more than that, both in carrying capacity and ammunition. So you can add stuff to micro rigs to facilitate this, but for every wing, expander, GP pouch, magazine pouch, and more, you are attempting to shove more stuff into a surface area that isn't much larger than in a rectangle that was meant to fit on a plate carrier. You're losing ease of use, elegance, accessibility to some of these objects, and you're really kind of pushing the micro rig to the limit of what it was designed to do. You end up with something that is not micro, nor cheap, and probably still only holds three mags at the ready. Now micro rigs adapted to be full-size chest rigs are not bad by any means. We see them used regularly like this. And I'd argue that three plus one magazines is generally right for a default mission set. But that begs the question, can we do it cheaper and can we do it more efficiently if we design a system to carry all this stuff from the ground up instead of trying to adapt what is functionally a nylon box with Velcro that has to work in multiple configurations and still attach to a plate carrier at the end of the day? At minimum, surely we can lose some redundancy in nylon stitching and thus cost. And this plays out. You look at something like the Recce Rig, the Plat Attack, the Velsus Pusher, none of which are budget options, mind you. They all still come under the cost of a standard micro rig decked out with accoutrements. That's a fancy word. But it's not just cost. We get a lot of convenience with something like an onward recce rig or this plat attack. A little less so with the Vel system pusher. Yeah, we're carrying a lot more magazines. Such that even in the single stack configuration, we have four magazines. And in the double stack configuration, we can get eight or even ten magazines on deck. 
but because of how the chest rig is designed, and we don't put pouches over our magazines, unless you're the valve system pusher, and the chest rig grows horizontally instead of just more bulky, we end up with something that can carry the same amount of gear as most micro rig configurations, but it's spread out over a larger area. Thus, we still maintain that more slim setup. We also keep gear closer to our center of mass, which is not just important for energy efficiency during high stress scenarios, but it also helps with movement and mitigating chafing over a longer time period. But on top of that, this lack of bulk also not only facilitates the pro movement, which we mentioned was a huge downside of the micro rig, but it also helps with hiking, trekking, patrolling, wrecking. Now there are many other larger rigs like the Mayflower, which are really honestly quite bulky. But even those, in my time tinkering with them, are much slimmer than a bulk-decked micro-rig. The benefits don't stop there. While micro-rigs edge out in pre-mission configuration with removable placards, magazines, and more, the chest rig isn't necessarily left behind. Yeah, we're gonna have a little more trouble bringing customized magazine loadouts, right? So switching from 308 to 556 to AK, it can be done, but it's far less elegant. But we have the option of configuring how many magazines we bring in a much more elegant fashion. We have the default magazine option of eight, maybe 10 magazines, but that's often overkill for a lot of mission sets. The, we have the ability to go light and switch some of the magazine pouches into GP pouches for extra gear, lasers, monocular, water, notebooks, smoke grenades, different magazine types, or even an extra radio. This provides a extra layer of versatility that the micro rig does not have with its magazine pouches due to most of them just being very stringent in their volume and dimension requirement. But also being on the razor's edge of what is acceptable magazine capacity wise. We can't just jettison one of our magazines to fit a radio. That means we're down to two plus one, which is really low. Yes, I know I've done it before. This flexibility extends in the field as well. Perhaps we want to just shove extra first aid that fell out of our first aid kit into a pouch. Or we just shove other random bullshit that we find into it. Or sometimes you get gear passed off to you, but it never actually ends up going back to the original user and you don't have a pouch for it. You know, well, maybe you've already expended some magazines and you can shove it in there. It happens way more often than you think. Now, it's not to say that chest rigs are the dominant choice or they don't have issues. When you get a chest rig, that's it. There's no changing what you got. You can typically add to chest rigs, but it's very difficult to take away without getting scissors and the sewing kit out, which is pretty lame on a $200 piece of nylon kit. In fact, that's probably the biggest single downside. It's really hard to find the perfect chest rig. Every single time you buy one, you find, ah, oh, it's got two extra pouches I didn't care about, it's got weird location of pouches, or it's just all covered in pistol reload pouches as you try to figure out what to put in these pistol things. In. Combined with the fact that chest rigs actually wear fairly differently, it's hard really to tell without trying it on for yourself. Kind of like clothes or something. I don't know. I just buy clothes in bulk. If you really want the best chest rig, you're going to kind of end up with a giant pile of these things and then you're going to have to sell them off at a loss. It's hard to get a perfect chest rig in a lot of ways. On that note, hey, Razvax here. I am not responsible with money. Please help fund my poor financial decision by Subscribestar so I can continue buying four plus chest rigs to properly educate myself on chest rigs to bring you the content that at most will generate a hundred bucks. <laughs> most chest rigs are also married to a flap system, which is really good if you want a flap system, but also sort of suck if you've gotten really used to fast reloads or reloads with retention most flap systems will require two-handed manipulation to put the partial back in. And that really ties into the ethos of the chest rig and the micro rig as a whole. A lot of the benefits of the chest rig are that it minimizes how the gear is placed on your body and moves it in a more horizontal fashion away from the center line. As mentioned, this is great for long mountainous activity, very long treks, patrols, whatever, but it comes with the downside. The micro rig is much more efficient with tempo and accessing stuff. Right, those admin pouches up front that I mentioned that are so prevalent on micro rigs, yeah, they're annoying for the prone, but what if you need to access a map, compass, markers, glow sticks, whatever, very frequently and in a rapid fashion? Well, then something like that is absolutely mandatory and it's worth the cost you pay for it. Similarly, if you do need to access something regularly on a chest rig, a lot of chest rig designs where the pouch are 
are much more difficult to access with something like the onward research one kind of requiring a contortion to get to the pouch area and then something like the plat attack requiring you to basically snap your back in half to reach it because the back strap comes over it right it's all give and takes ultimately it's really hard to affirmatively say hey this chest rig is for you this one isn't you can't really say micro rigs are up for assaulting work and chest rigs are for mountainous activity, though many times it does play out like that. If I had to give you a policy gear prescription, as in give you my opinion, I kind of view it like this. If you have a very minimalist setup, a slim micro rig is really hard to beat. You have the best range of movements of your arms, your rifles don't get hung up on stuff nearly as often, and you have the easiest reloads and reloads with retention. It also allows you to expand readily into something like comms with just an expander wing and you're done, ready to go. Micro rigs make for a really good first setup as well. However, if you know precisely what you want and where you want it on your gear, you can venture into the despairing abyss of chess rig land. And you can get anywhere from something that is quite minimalist to a full blown kit system like the Velsus Mayflower or the Plot Attack Mark V. These kits are still quite minimalist and slimline compared to what you can normally get and are quite good for hiking and mountainous style kit where the expectation of prone and a lot of arm movement is quite prevalent. However, it's important to realize you get to what you get and most of these offer minimal configuration, if any at all. So if the stars align, you might find yourself going with one of these. However, you may find it's not really what you're looking for and you'll be pushed back towards a micro rig with an expander wing to really hone in on exactly what you want. For a more, I hate to use the word, assaulter style setup, a more aggressive setup, you may find the micro rig kind of fits what you want a little better. One thing I've noticed with almost all micro rig setups, except the Vell system pusher, is that the pouches are generally a little harder to access because they, they get pushed off to your side under your armpit a lot more. And the micro rigs allow you really to have quicker access to your stuff. As mentioned, that comes with the downside of having really shitty prone. Anyways, hopefully this kind of helped prime you to think about, hey, chest rig, hey, micro rig, if you are in that market at this time, it's really hard to put my foot down. It's very much subjective opinion. Let's head over and check out the recce rig on the floor. Let's see how it stacked up in my general usage over the last couple months. All right, finally time to look at this chess rig. For sure, not an extreme long-term review, but enough to give you my personal impressions on it and how it's held up for me. We'll see how it does long term. Remember, I'm evaluating not just this, but four other rigs for something I actually want to use in the, you know, long term, my forever chest rig, or at least my next couple of years chest rig. Getting over the overview real quick, it'll be fast, but that's a good thing. The Onward Recce rig is designed and defined by what it doesn't have. There's no excess here, no bullshit pouches, there's no admin pouches mounted on top of everything, there's no pistol mag carrier shoved in every single little corner. Too many of these setups have decided that they need to put stuff on every square inch to really up the feature set, and that kind of ruins it by a feature creep. As I mentioned in the comparison, these types of rigs generally appeal to those that want more hiking mountainous patrol type setups. So having less bulk, less fat setups to minimize chafing, ease of movement, ease of gear, and wearing like a backpack is quite important. Of the multiple rigs I've tried, many from very reputable companies, this is actually one of the more minimalist setups in how the gear is orientated. Left and right, we see two areas for pouches. These obviously don't come with it. In fact, you can see everything I've attached here is in multicam because I'm generally a multicam guy and I didn't want to buy new stuff for this rig. You get four magazines in the center with a flat style system. These flaps underneath have, have rubber style inserts, if you want to call it that, to protect the actual nylon from the magazines. This is pretty relevant considering most metal magazines are quite sharp on the edges, and the more you use them, especially in training contexts, the more of like abrasion they create, like little uh, pokey bits. And this rubber likely helps the long-term survivability of the mag system. We get a standard H-harness, comms routing, 
the ability to attach either antennas or more cables. There's also Velcro straps here to aid in retention. Thus, for example, when you go from two mags to one mags or to potentially facilitate different diameter magazines, right? Different calibers or whatever. We get our standard H harness here with the usual comms routing, the ability to put stuff in between here, for example, a PTT and other such things. We have the ability to tie down excess nylon as well as uh, sections to cinch down that extra cabling, you know, when you tie it to yourself so you don't have to cut it. Or if you do cut it, you still have a extra area of adjustability. A summer setup with very little amounts of clothes to a winter setup, which might be a little more bulky, thus requiring you to expand this entire system. This is all industry standard stuff. For some reason, this industry standard stuff isn't always standard. So not really stand out seeing it on here, but certainly a welcome addition. On the back, we have this panel, which is a very subtle, but very appreciated feature. With this Velcro panel, we're able to kind of hook into that micro rig ecosystem where we can attach, you know, a dangler, but we can also attach extra magazine pouches, radio pouches, TQ pouches, all of those expander wings that have been created for the micro rig now sort of work here. Most things are gonna be stuck on the inside, but that's all right. We do a lot of that with our cummerbund system on plate carriers where we have the radio on the inside of the system and you can do that here. I have mine configured in a fairly basic bitch standard way. We have on the left here, a embitter pouch for my radio. I have an XTS 2500, which is a fairly big radio, but it pales in comparison to the chungus that the uh, the Prick 148s are. Now, I can fit my radio in here just fine, and it, it's nice and snug, but uh, it's not quite tall enough so I can't access my, um, my volume and my channel changing and uh, like encryption bullshit buttons, all that stuff. So I'm probably gonna switch away from this radio at some point. But it's one of those cases where it works just well enough that I'm too lazy to execute on the change. You know how it is. On the right, we have a GP pouch. I intentionally run these empty because very often I will need specific things for a specific mission or you know time of year or whatever. So I'd rather just leave this empty and then fill it with what I need depending on the day. And I also can leave it empty because you know how it is. You, you go onto a thing and stuff just kind of comes out of the backpack but doesn't go in the backpack again and you need to put it somewhere. And having a dedicated pouch instead of you know your pockets is appreciated. Or you're using something and you don't want to quite put it away, wet, away yet, you can store it in here. You pick up something, put it in here. The list goes on. It's can very convenient and useful to have an empty pouch because more often than not, that empty pouch won't stay empty. I have... For medical, I run this Faro Concepts dangler. It's a smaller dangler compared to, you know, most dangler systems. But because I've moved a lot of my quick access medical up front to this magazine pouch, well, uh, I feel like in conjunction, I get the, the size of a full IFAC with these two in conjunctions, and I really don't need eight magazines. Right through the back, I have my Disco 32 PTT, this mounts or links into a pair of contacts, press the button, and we're off to talking about things. Now, I'm probably actually gonna swap it out for this guy real soon here. What this is, is looks like a PTT, and it really looks like the one that comes with the, the contacts, the big boy, but that is actually just a PTT. This is a multifunction communication thing. Right? So it mounts into the radio, you plug it into your contacts, and you use this as a PTT, that's it. You get nice little volume buttons, but who cares? The real party trick here is that if you unplug your radio, this turns into a speaker and a microphone. And for a mountainous kit like this, it's actually very convenient to be able to, well, not have to wear this giant thing over your head that restricts airflow and all that. So you can either take off your contacts, you know, put it around your neck, put it kind of on your head so your ears can breathe, your head can, you know, sweat a little more effectively, or even attach it to your side, but still not lose the ability of your comms to speak and to hear, since this is both a speaker and a microphone once again. And then as soon as you want to switch back, plug it in and you're back to a headset communication system. Pretty cool. I'm looking forward to really running this guy a lot more. So, honestly, big fan of this thing. Fits my desired needs of a mountainous long-range patrol type setup, but 
everything typically has some gripes and I do have some gripes with this thing. Some very personal to me, some that are semi annoying and some that will piss people off. Who knows, it will depend on the person. The first aspect, and this is more of a gripe, I think the two by three molly panels on the left and right, it's too little. At minimum, one of these needs to be a three by three because most people want a general purpose pouch and most general purpose pouches are not two by three, they're three by threes. You can do what I did by using a zip tie and attaching one of the panel, uh, molly sections in or the, the pal sections in, but you know, obviously it's less than ideal. But that brings it to the second gripe. I honestly think three double stack magazines are superior to four double stacks in terms of orientation. Six mags is enough to get a lot of things done. And if you want more magazines, as mentioned, you can just pull them out of your backpack. Very few situations will require eight magazines before you can even get to your backpack. And removing that single, you know, mag shingle area allows us to gain the space needed for those extra molly panels while also just bringing the size down a fair bit. Finally, in my experience, four stacks are generally worse than three stacks in terms of usability. What do I mean by that? Well, a four stack magazine, if you go into weird positions, prone, like kind of crunching fetally behind a rock to get a good firing position and cover, you name it, four magazines tend to buckle on the inside and create a opening up here, while a three mag system can't buckle in the middle because there's a mag in the middle. And it just works out that ever bit more conveniently. Now, is that a gargantuan deal? No, it's just a very small nitpick. All right, this part bugs me a fair bit more and that's the flap system. I am a big fan of flap systems. I've used flap systems more than I've had this YouTube channel. Uh, only recently have I been using micro rigs and like uh, quasi hybrid Tidex systems. But flap systems are pretty damn cool. They're versatile and they have excellent retention. However, for whatever reason, there's a combination of features on these flaps that either exist to facilitate different magazine types or to enhance retention or both. I don't know exactly why it's set up the way it is, but regardless, I don't think they belong. Retention, because this is a flap system, we have infinite retention. Different magazine systems, because to me, this is a 5.56 rig. Most people are gonna run this as a 5.56 rig. If you wanna do 5.56, commit to it, do it right, in my opinion. So what, what do I mean by this? Well, first off, it's the elasticity over here. I don't really think these actually serve any purpose. If you care about retention, put the flap on. Perhaps the logic is when you take out one of the mag, one of the mags, it still retains the mag. But once again, I think you should just use the flap. And if you really want to run an open style like this, you can actually just do this. This provides a fair bit of retention, even without the elastic system. I know because I used to do this a lot with my, my other flap rig setup before I started the channel. I think this works just fine and it works fine with the plat attack that I'm also reviewing right now. And that doesn't have any forced retention like this one does. All the elastic really seems to do is make it so you need two hands to get magazines back into this thing. And it just ends up being a royal pain in the ass with, to me, no real gain other than those aforementioned guesses as to what they're for. My second issue is this overly large Ford flap. When you have two magazines in, it's semi annoying because it tends to want as you can see, it tends to want to fold down like this. Why? Because this loops over the top of the magazines. It's kind of bad with PMAGs and really bad with stenags. Uh, stenags are significantly shorter. Uh, so every time you close this thing, you will impart a bend on this, this piece. And you can see it on all of these. I bend these back regularly, but they just tend to want to peel forward. And that's just due to the inherent nature of this design. So you'll constantly find yourselves rolling this backwards to try to undo the, the memory of this thing wanting to fold forward because every time you drop the flap, it folds forward. So when you go to a single mag, it gets really bad because you notice now, look how much overhang there is. And when you fold this over, it never wants to peel inwards. It always peels outwards. And there have been times, look, this isn't even like a forced thing. There have been times when it's like this. And this is almost entirely folded forward, further exasperating the, the memory of this, this wanting to fold forward. It is incredibly infuriating when you put down a flap and it doesn't actually want to stay flapped. And when you think about how you use a rig like this, putting in two mags, that's an admin task. You can hold this down and then slowly put this over top. However, in the field, when you do a reload, 
out comes the thing, pull out a mag, flap that bitch back down. And right now, you can see, even when I've unrolled it, it naturally wants to go forward. And this is something that gets worse with time and not bad. Now, to be fair, these are nitpicks because if this was my forever rig, I'd take a pair of scissors, get rid of the elastic, remove it, and then cut this Velcro down to size. But it's absolutely worth mentioning in my opinion because A, cutting into you know stuff like this compromises the thing. You're gonna have useless excess bits over here. You can cut onto the stitching, but the stitching serves double duty of holding these pieces down. So you really need to be careful if you're gonna fuck with that. And cutting into this, well, the stitching only begins down here. So if you cut midway through, well, you're gonna have exposed stuff and no amounts of lighter bullshit is going to return that that structural integrity of a dedicated stitch. Now you could stitch it, but I'm a fuck and I don't have a stitching system. Also known as a sewing machine. Anyways, that's that's about it. I've been rambling on long enough in this video. So this is the first of four chest rigs I'll be taking a look at. And Hop is actually coming down here. So probably actually already been down here when I released this video. And we're gonna be taking a look at his rigs and my rigs. And we're gonna have a giant fucking clusterfuck of chest rigs in a pile. And we're gonna lightning fast compare all of them and kind of give our thoughts on the, the matter. Regardless, thanks for watching. This has been the Recky Onward Research Chest Rig. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.